Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video on the Golang series. Now we need a little bit of a different setup. Uh, don't worry, it's not too big, too much, but we need some changes to happen now. Because we are now working into multiple packages, so there are different folders and inside different folders there are different files. This has never been done so far in the series, so now we need a different structure, need to understand a little bit more on the VS Code. And then I'll, t I'll talk about the strategy that we are going to follow for the upcoming videos. So let's first go ahead and do that. Now eventually what you're going to notice that as we have this MongoDB API, we have controllers and models and routers and main.go and especially when you'll start writing the code, this will give you some of the errors like package model and it will say, hey, uh, this is not a module and whole bunch of errors and same happen will happen in the controllers. They will also give you errors. These are definitely not errors, but they are going to bother you a little bit. And the reason why they are happening is because of few packages. They try to give you standards. If you have successfully installed them, they are going to give you some of the issues. So how we can get rid of them, that is the most important issue. So go ahead, open up your folder, which is my Golang LCO. And remember, we are keeping everything into a separate directory. Yes, this, ex this is exactly for this reason. We are right now into this uh, folder, which is 25 uh, Mongo API. This is where we are creating all of the stuff. And this is where we need to go ahead and work on now. So what we're going to do is first, let's bring up a copy of this VS Code. So this is another instance of the VS Code. And we're going to go ahead and uh, put up my Golang series and this 25 Mongo API into this folder. The basic structure or the basic recommendation is that if you are working on these multiple directories and stuff, uh, it should be opened up as a workspace. And this is what exactly we are doing right now. Now, not only that, we are going to require a bit more of the detail. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because we don't need it right now. And I'll walk you through with the other stuff in a minute. A couple of other interesting stuff is about to happen here. Okay. So this is all what we got and we're going to just go ahead and close all of this. We are not too much worried on that part. So we can go ahead and shrink it down. Now, first thing we need to go ahead and provide a package of the main that is really important. So let's go ahead and say this is a package main and inside that we are going to go ahead and declare a function main. Nothing much. We are going to do a fumpt of uh, Mongo, MongoDB API. Go ahead and save this. This is going to remove a lot of the errors. For the mod, uh, this is not too much of the worried because we have actually done the go get of the MongoDB and stuff. Sometimes the packages come nicely, sometimes they give you some of the issues. So this is, we can do another round of go get uh, MongoDB uh, that is going to fix majority of the stuff. I'm not too much worried on that part. This is also good. Now moving into the models, as you can see automatically, now this is not giving you uh, any issue. This is all no red squiggly line. And also in the controller, uh, yes, there are some red squiggly line around this one. So probably we need to do the go get of the MongoDB again. Uh, but this is majority of the stuff is working fine and this is going to go great. Now let's go ahead and try to get the MongoDB again. So maybe if this actually works, so we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, I need to go get MongoDB drivers, so copy that. And let's go ahead and see if this is working fine. And now I don't need to do any kind of open and integrated terminal. If I go ahead and do ls, I already see all the main files that are supposed to be here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this one. This hopefully is going to download all the packages that are required and will uh, fix up all the remaining issues. Majority of the issues, not all of them. Now notice here, they are almost all are fixed and at least our go mod file and everything are super happy now. Okay, so this is going to fix the issue. One more thing I would like to mention up here because this might save you some of the errors. Go ahead and run command shift P or control shift P, yes, P for parrot, and we're gonna open this up. Now go ahead and type go and space tools. Now, as soon as you're going to type go space tools, it's going to say that, hey, uh, two couple of options might come up. We are looking for install update tools. Once you select this one, this is going to open up a whole lot of packages. And you, if you want to install some of them or all of them, you can go ahead and use your arrow key and just use the space bar to mark them as install, uninstall. So whatever the things you think that these are going to be helpful for you. In fact, all of them are going to be helpful for you, especially this Go PLS, which is a language server from the Go. It does some kind of nonsense sometimes. Sometimes it is super helpful. So go ahead and select all of them. Hit OK and they all will be installed on your system and will be updated if yours is not updated. This will also help you to get rid of a lot of squiggly lines, but not in all of the cases.
Okay, so now this is all get uh, set up is all ready and now we are in standing up into a separate package. The reason why I did it because uh, very soon we are going to import this model into this controller. And in order to that happen automatically and without red squiggly line, this was an important setup. I know a little bit more, but this is important. Now coming up onto the part, we have actually connected with the database. We haven't tested it out yet. We are not on that ground that we can test it as of now. We will be there very, very soon. Okay, moving on. What is the further action plan from here onwards? Now the plan is really simple. We have seen in the previous video that if we want to add any value into a slice, we can just bring that value from the request.body or the URL params, and we can just process the data and inject that into the slice. But in case of the database, there is a little bit more help that we need. So what we're going to do, we'll have two separate set of methods, one for all MongoDB and here all the basic methods. So the basic method, the job of basic method is going to be simple. They will bring up all the data from request body or URL params, will uh, do all the checkings and authentication, whatever they need to do with the data, they'll do that. Once they are all happy at the very end of it, they're going to call these MongoDB helpers and the job of these MongoDB helper is really simple. They take the data, whatever you give them, they don't do any further check because it is expected that here you have done all the checks. They'll just receive the data and will insert the data into the database and will give us a report that uh, whether it was a successful as an operation or not. So you get it right. We need to first define all these helper method of MongoDB. Then we will again come back here and we'll define the regular method which brings the data from the request body and stuff and we'll move forward. I know this is a little bit off too much of the theory that you are getting up, but again, rewatch a couple of minutes of the video, you will understand this one up, uh, nice and easy. So this is the point where I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, this is where uh, Mong Mongo, Mongo, come on, MongoDB helpers. Now these all helpers uh, usually go into a separate file. I'm not gonna throw them up into a separate file. I'll just keep them up here. And this is how we'll be giving that. Now let's go ahead and write a method which says insert one record. Now this is a simple helper method. It takes some data and it just add the data into the MongoDB. That's all what we're going to do in this video. Let's go ahead and define that. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one as insert one movie and that's what it does. It inserts a movie into the database just like that. Now what kind of movie you add? I will say that I add a movie that you'll give it to me and that movie will be coming up from the type model dot Netflix. And you might be wondering why not models? Why model? Because it all depends on not what you call your file, but what to define in your package. I call this package as model. So I'm gonna say, hey, from the model, bring up a structure which is Netflix. So the type of Netflix will go up here. I hope that is pretty obvious and pretty clear. Now you're going to love the fact that how easy it is to work with the database, especially when you have database like MongoDB. So what it does, remember we have a collection here. If you remember, we talked a lot about the collection, which is a reference of the table. Inside the table, there is a column. Yes, that's exact same. Now it has a lot of method that you can work on with that. As soon as I put up a dot, you can see there is a find, find one, drop, distinct, uh, uh, distinct update one and all of that. I told you, these are super easy to work on with method. One of such method is insert many and insert one. Insert one obviously just inserts one value, insert many updates, many values. In our case, insert one is the good one. In case you focus a little bit on the previous long video, we had a lot of discussion about the context. Yes, you always have to pass on the context whenever you are doing any database operation. We also read in the documentation that in such cases, we can go ahead and use the background context. And what do you want to add into the database? In my case, I just want to add this movie. That's it, that's all it takes to add the data. Now, obviously, since this is a database operation, it can be as successful or it can give me an error. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one as uh, inserted or an error. So whatever it gives back to me. Okay, so we will proceed with caution. We're going to go ahead and say if error is not equals to nil, then obviously there is some issue. So we're gonna go ahead and say log dot fatal and fatal with error. So it's almost like a panic, but a more controlled version of the panic. Now this inserted, I expect that you'll be doing a fumped dot print on that because it's a a huge set of key value pairs. It gives you a lot of information. Probably for your work, you want to analyze this more further. In my case, I'm gonna just go ahead and get one value from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say fumped, and we'll be printing up a message that says 
inserted one movie in DB with ID and I just want to go ahead and grab that ID. How can I go ahead and do that? I am going to say, hey, insert, I need to put up a comma. Hey, inserted, and as you put up a dot, you can see it has uh, a whole bunch of other things that we can use. In this case, we are just interested in the ID. So what happens? Whenever you add any value in the database, that value gets receive, receives a unique ID, and that unique ID as a success is being returned back with this operation of insert one. And that's it, that's pretty much it. Now, one more thing I would like to bring your attention to is I have used insert i as a lowercase because it is expected this is a helper method. I will never be exporting this method. This is the MongoDB helper method. The other method that we talked about, they will be written with the first uppercase letter because there are chances, not chances, it is 100% sure that we will be exporting those methods so that other people can also use that. Okay, quite a lot of stuff that we have done in this video. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video. Thank you.